start. Okay, so this week we are having a look at disease risk modeling. And the first interesting thing that is mentioned in this um, in this chapter is um, something that um, anyone would like to uh, to know when uh, aim to um, mapping um, diseases. Okay, so you want to you aim to be able to um, find out the areas where, in this case of that we are talking of spread of diseases, in which areas exactly the disease is spreading, and you might want to attempt to uh, like predicting where we 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 go next okay so but for uh some some um uh reasons cases uh, are aggregated within areas so you, you cannot uh just in it, if you search for data specific specific data within a, a, a particular area or under areas such as census or um, a smaller area, then you will need to find the, this data. But in general, okay, what's happened is that you have uh, the cases that are uh, in some census group uh, within certain areas, so larger areas. So you cannot, uh, so sometimes you, you imagine Africa, okay, which is huge. And there are some um, countries within Africa uh, where when you attempt looking at diseases, uh, spread of diseases and everything, you might see that that area is involved with the spread of some particular disease. But in fact, so in reality, what's happened is that is not, maybe could be that it's not the whole area, whereas this thing is me mentioning, but it might be within this area. So this is the first point that is mentioned in this chapter. And so we are, um uh, aiming at identifying areas where there is the spread of a uh, particular disease to identify high risk areas and for this reason we need to bear in mind that we are talking of some uh larger area than what is uh, uh they actually is, uh, what it actually is because of um uh, when we are talking about like um, areas such as Africa or uh, areas with, where the collection of data is a bit of a challenge. So we might have uh, uh, to uh, think about that the cases that we find within the areas are most probably located uh, within the area and not spread all around, okay, in particular. Okay, so, um, and um, what's happened is that let's, um, <clears throat> we are obviously using INLA, okay, for mapping, um, making a model that we'll be able to uh, map, uh, so uh, identify uh, um, most probably, uh, area uh, uh, the, of the spread of a particular disease. Here we are looking at uh, um, the risk of lung cancer uh, in Pennsylvania, USA in 2002. So we are not talking about Africa, we are talking about US, but uh, as well, so we have data, but they're not that granulated. 
So we are talking about uh, the, the entire area. And the, the model that is used within INLA, we know that is an integrated nested Laplace approximation model, modeling type of model. Uh, what's happened is that it uses a Bayesian hierarchical model. Okay. And um, um, this uh, is able to identify uh, smoothed relative risks. Uh, and what we are going to see is basically how, um, wh where are they located? Where are located in, within Pennsylvania area? Okay. Uh, the, the model that is used is a Poisson. Why it's a Poisson? Because the, num the cases uh, of a disease are not, so are considered not many, okay? So they can happen uh, in uh, um, uh, sparse numbers. Okay, and so the best uh, way is to use a Poisson model with parameters, uh, which are the expected cases and uh, the corresponding uh, fixed uh, eff effect, okay, which are uh, identified as the logarithm of theta, uh, for, for example. These are so. These are the parameters of of the Poisson. I don't know if you recall, or if you are interested in how is the Poisson distribution for mathematical formulation. Um. Uh, but basically, what's happened? It the, it's a ratio, uh, which can consider the number the um, uh, permutations. Okay, so the, the, the number of times uh, something repeated it itself within some conditions. Okay, just to have an yes, So me. this, yeah. For me, the, um, well, I, I know the Poisson, which has the, the mean as its parameter, but um, uh, this uh, was new to me that you can, uh, distinguish the expected value and also some, yeah, actually some extra components, the theta, which is put here. I did not know of that. Is it something that is used specifically in health, in, in disease uh, contexts? I see that the inla function has its specific arguments to capture that. Uh, I did not know of uh, about it. Yeah. Is it uh, more and more general? Mathema mathematically speaking, uh, so you have a formula and then you have a parameter, which is in this case is lambda. And lambda, what is this lambda is basically in the case of a Poisson represent the estimated value of um, the phenomenon that you are, um, um, analyzing. Okay, so this parameter in this case is breaking down within two. So you you the, the, there is some reasoning behind you are interested within a Poisson because uh, the Poisson identifies um, with the, this the, the type of formula of the Poisson is it's able to identify some pattern which is quite similar to what's happened in this case uh, in this type of cases and it it forces a parameter but then you cannot just put inside the expected cases as the parameter so just compare the lambda just as an, as the expected cases because you need to consider other things that happen and so these are called like adjustments within uh Type of models. And this can, can happen with a, a normal distribution, with a binomial, with a, so you you take the parameter 
with in some cases it's a probability okay so the expected cases is, is um and you make some uh you you make some assumptions on the on the structure of the parameter and then you build up the parameter and you plug it in in the formula so in this case we are uh, we have this uh, the, the, the Poisson parameter, which is as as you correct uh, uh, that's that's absolutely the the what what, what exactly is so the lambda uh, in this case is composed by the expected value and a theta. The theta, in fact, if you can see, the theta is in itself considered as a, a model, as a function model. So, uh, and um, it is uh, uh, better seen um, as calculated as the logarithm of theta, and then you reverse it to obtain theta that you can then multiply with the expected uh, cases. So the, it's it's all reasoning behind that we as we are as a, as a user of the uh, the tools, uh, we assume that we trust, you know, the shine the scientists that have um, been uh, thoroughly through building up those those things, no? And so, um, this is uh, basically what's happened inside. Okay, so they did a fantastic uh, job, uh, and then end up they end up to uh this this uh final formulation okay better than that we have a tool that we can use which is our illa in the within r and so we can put this those things uh, inside so the, this uh, theta uh um the relative risk so we are multiplying the expected cases times the relative risk so if i to to build up our our parameter. Uh, okay, let's have a look uh, for for a second if something happened, uh, something good happened within um, my R. Okay, if, if I can uh, compile. Apparently, yes. Okay. So uh, the, the data, as I said, that we are using are from the spatial uh, API package and uh, are these data pen uh, lung cancer, I'll see. Uh, we can see that it is a list because it contains geo, geo information, uh, also data on smoking and all the, uh, what is called data uh, it, con it contains a few things, and we can see here we have the counties, the cases, the population, race, gender, and age. And while smoking is, is, is still data, but just contains just the county uh, and the, the the smoking rates. Okay. Um, also, we have the spatial uh, spatial polygons, so we can we are we are able to to, to do some mapping for for uh, Pennsylvania. Um, okay, in fact, the first thing, let's see if my uh, uh, no now it's not there is no illa. Okay. Uh, and so I had this uh, genius idea. So as you can see, um, this one is the previous uh, book of Paula Moraga, Dr. Moraga. Uh, and um, there are two chapters in particular, it's chapter three and chapter four. They are talking about our illa. Uh, so if I copy this so you can, I can install illa in the meantime that is uh, not uh, requiring any other packages 
uh, and I suggest uh, to have a look uh, at these two chapters because, uh, for example, she is now telling about using a normal distribution. You can, and this is the uh, one of the two um, functions that we use in our model. So the uh, IID is identical, independent, the distributed um, type of model. Uh, well, we going back to, ah, okay, I had my notes already. Yeah, I don't want to touch it because I don't know if uh, something wrong happened. Okay, so, Uh, and so we are going to see uh, how to model a disease and how to map a disease. Okay, just to to a little uh, continue with the with this uh, with this introduction, uh, I mentioned it, uh, those those challenges. So you you might uh, it would be interesting to have a look at some extra uh, resources. Um, and so here is the uh, the same thing that we we had, and so we can map uh, start using the uh, special polygons pa um, inside the PNLC uh, list of data. We need to load a simple feature package, SF, so we can transform, because they are special polygons, transform um, the special um, data to a simple feature. Uh, I, I, I wanted to show you what is happening. Okay, so let's see if I can. Okay. So to Okay. So let's let's uh, start uh, loading um I always load tidyverse even if just the pliers needed just to now in my shout that missed some packages. Okay, no, apparently we can do it. Okay, uh, we have, uh, um, I mentioned the data and there we go. So I load the simple feature package and then we can see if we just have a quick look at these special polygons, we can see that we have uh, a bunch of coordinates, okay, which are spatial um, um, uh, information. Okay, what we want is a special feature. Okay, I'm just uh, so they, uh, as you can see, this is a class special polygon. So we are going to transform as a special feature. And, and here it is now a special feature collection. What is the difference just to mention, you know, but just to mention is, is that now the coordinates are uh, wrapped within uh, um, to be a geometry so that you can just map the polygon uh, and they, you don't need to group it and everything. Uh, okay. What uh, this is a bit, um, you know, we use uh, uses the supply function to slot the polygons within a function and the to 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 map all the polygons to an ID and then add the county the county names, names to map. Okay, this way, this is now a different as before, we, we've got the county. 
here the added it, it's a it's a nice sometimes you know how, how can i add things uh how can i map so in this case this is uh, a way to do that you can use this function and use lot the polygons to an id okay so now we are good to go um and uh, we make a new data, which is customized, grouping by counties, because this is our data, no? Okay, we have already seen uh, in, uh, in a way that we can sum all the cases that happen within a county in Pennsylvania. And this is the, the output. So this is what uh, our data is going to be. So we have the counties and these are the the sum of cases within this each county. I haven't used map neither of those uh, map view uh, or leaf like, le uh, which is already it's very well explained in the chapter. So you just you know just want uh, why if we use ggplot we can just use uh, geom simple feature because now we have a simple feature we don't need to specify nothing uh, i use the map and then join d our new data by county and then we can uh, build the first layer as a simple feature and fill it by cases this is a um, like t-shirts, uh, the thing, uh oh Okay. So as you can see, what is that? D, ah, uh, D is not fine. Okay. Okay. So this is the output, okay. So we can see that this is Pennsylvania. Uh, these are um, the, the counties within Pennsylvania, but there are two which are worth to mention, such as Algeri and Philadelphia. Which are they are affected by lung cancer uh, more than uh, more than others. Okay. Now the interesting thing is that we are now working on calculating the expected cases, which are not the cases. Okay. How do we do that? So the expected cases uh, are defined as the rate of disease. Uh, within a certain stratum, okay, and the population in the stratum. So um, you multiply these two values and sum them uh, within each county. Uh, and there is a, um, a function expected that you can use and does everything for you. What's happened is these things here. So basically, that multiply the rate of disease uh, by the population. And in fact, inside the function, you put the population. We had the data uh, within the data, no? Yeah. And we had the population. Population, which is uh, uh, not, uh, so it's by age within the same county. So what's happened here uh, is that you um, order by county, by race, by gender, by age, and then multiply the population by the cases, and then stratify. So it's basically what's happening in this function that it does grouping 
it's just as the same as if I, I was I were doing group by counting race, gender, and age, and then multiply the, uh, the sum of, I, I need to sum, I, I believe that it, it is a sort of, so multiply the population by the cases. And these are uh, 16, because we have two races, two gender, and four age groups. And so this is the highly expected case. As I, just, just to have a look at the first few, so there is a, a bit of a difference. Not very much, because when you plot it, you cannot see in terms of color un unless you adjust it. But we can see that the expected cases in some countries are expected to be more, while in other countries are expected less. And this is uh, uh, done um, because it consider the number of uh, of possible cases on on a, on all case or, 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 on all available information. Yeah, I think it makes use of the representation of different strata in each county. So I think in, in some way, this is already some model, the expected uh, number of cases, because it takes into account uh, race, uh, gender, and age. So it's a type of, I think, analysis of variance, you could say, because it will um, predict for each of these counties what will be what would be the expected value based on the contribution of each of those factors so uh, considering all of the population yeah so you have an effect of age an effect of gender and an effect of race and it will then apply that information for each county and predicts the expected value. So it's already tailored, customized for each county um, um, based on the distribution of uh, race, gender, and age in each county. That's how I have understood it, how this works. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice function. Nice function. But uh, then we are used both, so the cases and the expected, the num the observed and the expected within the the model. So it does more, um, and uh, so here I have done the same thing, uh, just um, like combining everything uh, with a again a geom simple feature, so we can see both of them. So the expected and the number of cases you get, as you can see, you cannot, if you look at the colors, you need, it would be, it would have been useful to the, uh, the palette. Okay. But, uh, so I put the numbers, so you can see that here, uh, the expected values for um, here is lower than the observed values, and as well as the, the uh, Philadelphia, these other ones here is uh, higher, it's lower than the other one. So th there is a, 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 a difference. Okay, so now we are going to think about mortality. Because this this disease, lung cancer, is a uh, it's a deadly disease. So uh, not not all the times, but as a, a standard dies mortality ratio, which can be calculated uh, um, uh, as the number of cases on the expected cases, and if this uh, standard mor uh, mortality rate is greater than one. 
So we have more cases than expected. It is lower than one, as uh, the county has fewer cases than the expected. So we have immediately an idea of what's happening within within the county. And so you can directly calculate it like this. Uh, and then we had the, the smoking um, covariates joining by county. And so here is the full data, new data uh, that we need. We have uh, the cases, the expected cases, the covariates of smoking. And here is the standard mortality ratio. We can see this is lower than one, while this is greater than one. So we know what, what this means. If we plot, attempt to plot, for example, uh, smoking versus the standard mortality ratio of lung cancer, uh, we can see that um, we have a, a certain um, behavior, okay, which is not linear. So, and we need to consider that this might be grouping by the uh, quantity of smoking. As you can see, so this uh, the standard mortality rate of virus, if if you if and and it is grouped by the level of smoking. Uh, and we can use this information within a map. Uh, and uh, did the same thing as before. Now, this is a bit more colored because what uh, it's in here is uh, colored by the standard mortality ratio. Okay, it's labeled by, oh no, this is the text. Um, where is it? Yeah. Uh, by the standard mortality ratio. And so um, we can see that this is higher uh, in some counties uh, while it's lower on others. So the number of cases are greater than the expected cases. So this is somehow a good thing for this, those countries, so because they, you expected less than, than what's happened within the future, but actually now they are greater because as, as you said, it's, it's a sort of uh, not modeling, but analysis of some coverage that gets into the meaning of the, uh, of the cases, just of the, the number of observations. Uh, and so, uh, I don't know which one of the two would be uh, most to consider uh, with, if, if thinking about the future, okay. So we are going to apply a model, which is uh, in this case, as I said, a Poisson. Uh, uh, we already talked about the uh, parameters, but what's happened here, okay, is that uh, uh, the, the structured random effect, it's uh, um, the noise, okay? So obviously we expect some, some behavior, but we expect even something that we do not expect, okay? And we uh, consider this to be behaving normally. So that as starting lower, I have some peak and then going down again. Yeah. With these parameters, where U is the random effect uh, and uh, it is an intrinsic, conditional autoregressive model, okay, this car, I car or car model. Um, 
what does is basically considering the uh, autocorrelation. Uh, I'm I'm not uh, uh, and so so basically what's happened you 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 sort of like thinking about uh, this can happen because something happened before something else happened uh, and so then to use the illa which is um, this nested. Um, Laplace approximation. Uh, what we do, we need to do, we need to consider the the neighbors of each county. So, because you are not, uh, you 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 cannot think that they are all independent. They they influence each other. They they might. That is my. Uh, it, it's important so to consider the the neighbors. And so let 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 me see if I uh, what I've done I've done I will if I can run it. So basically to calculate we will we we need to load SP dep in la and then uh, use on the map data uh, this poly to neighborhood function. Which is a, a polynomial that releases integers like two, three, four, twenty-four. Okay, that are indicating uh, identify the various neighbors, and then they are sort of indexes that the model then will go to pick up the index and use it in the model. Okay. I'm not sure about this this one here, but I take it for granted. So neighborhood to inla and then map adjustment to the neighborhoods. Yeah. Because it's, we, yeah. it's just another um, representation of a neighborhood's list, but okay. the in the format that inla needs it. So why and how, I don't know either, but it's what, it's a trick that in a, it's another format, but it's, yeah, it, it just has the same data since it is derived, derived only from the neighborhoods list itself. So it's, it can only contain that same information. So it's still the neighborhoods, the neighboring areas of each area. Okay. So let's have a look. No, I don't have this package. Okay. So, uh, and then if you use this inla dot read graph, uh, basically what that is building up uh, map adjustment to because this is what you need to use all of them one uh, right after the other so you first calculate the neighbors then you put inside uh, the map so you link the map with the neighbors uh, indexes and then um, with inla read graph Okay. So these are the neighbors, list of neighbors. We have uh, 67 uh, regions. If we do this, nothing, we cannot see what's happened. And then with inla read graph, we can see that these are the neighbors, these integers here. Okay. So we have 10 minutes left, uh, but basically what's happened that we need to uh, now add the U and VU, okay, which are the two elements, uh, two parameters of the 
uh, nested uh, Laplace approximation. Uh, and these are the number of rows of the map. Okay, that's for now are, are exactly the same, but then uh, they are going to be used like such a E and J, okay, to map. This are, as you explained last week, and then we need to specify the graph with G, the thing is that we just uh, calculated. And as you can see, we have two functions inside this model. We have uh, U and V. My connection is unstable, if you cannot hear me. Okay, one is BSAG and one is um, IID. We can run this. And then uh, this is the, we put the formula inside the ILA function. We specify that we want a family Poisson. The data is map. The expected cases are this. And then we require these two to have uh, the result, basically, save. OK, it doesn't work, so forget it. Uh, result as are uh, this one here you can see it we can see it here so uh res which is the result of the model uh as some information so if, if you do summary dot fixed you can recall the mean the standard deviation and everything so we can see the smoking is uh, positive uh, greater than one. And so influencing uh, the, the, the output. And also we can see what is the relative risk, which is the things that we are interested in. Okay, and to retrieve the, the relative risk, we can use the summary fitted values these are evidence that just the first three rows, but these are expected values of the relative risk. Uh, and then, um, so you save it, this information to map, so that we also now have the relative risk, and then you can map it. Uh, this is the what's happened in the map. Okay. Uh, so this is the uh, relative risk that is used with map view. We have this, uh, we can uh, map, map view, you just use the function, map view, then map, and then you specify uh, the color that you want to in this case, we like to see the relative risk. So we can see that this side of the county has a uh, relative risk, which is uh, lower. And then if we compare the two, the standard mortality ratio and the risk uh, 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 relative risk, we can see uh, that things are quite different. And so the relative risk within uh, um, this central area is lower, while here is a bit like puzzle. But here, here we had very the, 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 the lowest uh, values, while here the relative risk is a bit higher. So uh, there are some uh, things to consider. And so then, then there is a mention uh, about uh, what you can have a look at the marginal and see uh, what's happened, uh, you know, if this is, uh, this is our theta uh, and what is the, the area. Uh, this is the posterior distribution of the relative risk uh, of area 51 
which is the one that exceeds the threshold of uh, 1.2. Uh, and so this, um, we, we haven't, uh, for example, if we calculate the probability uh, that the relative risk uh, of the 51 countries, the country 51 ex exceed, so we want to see what is the probability that the relative risk will go higher than 1.2. Uh, and we set this as a threshold. So we can see that we can plot the posterior distribution and we can see where is this value here. And so the area, this bit here, will identify what is the mass of probability that this, this thing will have. Yeah, okay. Just... In fact, it's a p value for each area, considering a specific threshold, I think. Yeah, that that's that's uh, that that's very, yes, that's a very interesting thing as well. Um, so this is it. Uh, the the chapter eleven is uh, very straightforward uh, because basically there are a few things that uh, need to be considered, such as uh, that can happen when you mapping disease within an area. So there are misalignment data problem called MIDP, and this is um, a situation when um, spatial data being analyzed are a different scale than the one at which um, they were originally collected. So this can lead to some bias. And so you need to scale uh, and put everything on same scale. Also, uh, there is this uh, MAUP, modifiable area unit problem, which is uh, again, something that can happen when data are aggregated into different aerial units. And so this can lead to different results. Uh, and so if you aggregated the data at the country level, you might get different results than if you get aggregate data at state level. So these are, are things that need to consider when you look at the results. A special case of this is called ecology fallacy. Uh, and this might occur when you make inferences about individuals based on group level data, okay? So for example, if you find a correlation between income and disease at the country level, you might find that this is incorrect, not, not so, it's not, because assume that the same correlation exists at the individual level. So these are few things to consider. This is all I've got. <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. Thank you. Yeah.